Now the Bible goes beyond the Psalms to the Proverbs. Like in the books of history, we can meet Jesus Christ in the books of poetry. The Psalms do not simply record personal feelings and feelings, but just as the Psalms reveal the life of Jesus Christ, in the following book of poems we can find Jesus Christ. The Eternal and Unchanging Word of God One Story one story 52 psalms psalms chapter 1 to chapter 150 now we have come to psalms the old testament history ends with first and second kings and in chronicles and it was focused on david the temple and jesus christ who will come as the messiah we saw that the temple in the book of Ezra and the wall in Nehemiah was revealed and finally the record of keeping the faith centered on the temple in the book of Esther. And through the first book of poems, Job, we saw that God's sovereign ministry and God's righteousness in all things is something God acknowledged, not something that can be established by our morals and keeping the laws. Now it is the Psalms. Psalms is not just simple psalms as the title suggests. It is Jesus Christ expressed poetically in the center of the book of poems. The psalms were written for about 1000 years from Psalms 90, the first psalms recorded by Moses and Psalms 126. The psalms recorded during the period of returning from captivity and is edited by subject like the entire Bible, not in chronological order. Therefore, by reading the psalms in the order in which they are compiled, we can discover the life of Jesus Christ, the coming Messiah, revealed by God through the psalms. The Bible says, He said to them, This is what I told you. Why while I was still with you, everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Division of Psalms the Psalms are divided into five volumes. Volume 1 has 41 Psalms, from 1st Psalms to 41 Psalms, of which Psalm 1 and 2 can be seen as an introduction to the entire Psalm. Volume 2 consists of 31 Psalms, from 42 Psalms to 72 Psalms. Volume 3 consists of 17 Psalms, from 73 Psalms to 89 Psalms. Volume 4 has 17 psalms from 90 psalms to 106 psalms. Volume 5 has 44 psalms from 107 psalms to 150 psalms. Each volume was written and edited according to the characteristics of its contents. And although each volume is written with its own characteristics, the last psalms from each volume all ends with praising God forever. In particular, Psalm 150, the entire last psalm, ends by praising God. In the end, there are five books, each with its own own characteristics but the psalms are one book with one purpose psalm 1 Psalm 1 is an introduction to the Psalms. The psalmist starts with, Blessed is the man, and as we have repeatedly seen, the blessings referred to in the Bible is the Gospel. However, a definite article is added in front of man, referring to one person. So, blessed man here is Jesus Christ, and the Christians who receive the Gospel through Jesus Christ. The wicked sinners and mockers are those who do not recognize God and live as if they are the king of this world. Those who are blessed delight is in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night because they want to know God more. Whatever they do prospers. For such person and this prosperity is just as Joseph prospered during his sufferings, referring to a life living with God, walking with God. The wicked who pursue the things of this world and live thinking that this world is everything will disappear like the shaft the wind blows away, will not be able to endure judgment and will not be able to join the assembly of the righteous people who were called righteous by God, not by worldly standards. Therefore, the children of God, the righteous, will be acknowledged by God, but those who are kings in this world will perish. Psalms 2 the nation will be angry with the blessed, and the people will plot in vain. The kings and rulers of the world will stand against God, and God's anointed. The blessed in this world will be rebuked and ridiculed like this, and will be opposed. However, God, who is the true king in God's time, will laugh. God will install his king, and tell the blessed people, You are my son. Today I have become your father. The Gentile nations will become the inheritance of the blessed, and their possessions will reach the ends of the earth. Jesus Christ, the Iron Scepter will break those nations and break them like pottery. Therefore, the kings and judges of the world should serve God in fear and rejoice with trembling. If they do not kiss his son, they will receive his anger and perish. Blessed are those who take refuge in God. Characteristic of Volume 1 
It is not wrong to see all from the first volume as David's Psalms. David, like Job in the book of Job introduced before the Psalms, was a man after God's heart. Chosen as king by God's sovereignty, became king after passing through suffering such as death and after suffering, the same suffering like death again. He ended his life as a foreigner, hoping only for God completely. That is why the first Psalm following the book of Job begins with David's Psalm. David foreshadows the Messiah in the Old Testament, revealing and confirming God's covenant through his life of suffering and victory that finally comes together to achieve good. David's prayer and suffering will be revealed through Jesus Christ and will also be revealed in the life of a Christian. The overall background for part 1 is suffering for refinement. Therefore, David asked God for salvation and grace. He proclaimed that only God is help. He exalted only God and had hope in God. Even during all suffering and tribulation, David constantly proclaimed that only God was his God, Lord, his shield, fortress, rock, salvation, stronghold, light, and confessed to God his love, thanks, praise, joy, pride, and so on. This is when Psalm 23 came out. Characteristic of Volume 2 Psalm 42 and 43, which starts Volume 2, takes over Volume 1 and begin with the words to put hope in God. Although there is discouragement and anxiety in the mockery of those who say there is no God. So with faith and petition, they resolved and proclaimed God. In Volume 2, we can see that the sufferings revealed to David in Volume 1 are restored and the word of God leading to the son of the king. That is why Volume 2 ends with Solomon's Psalm 72. In the order of editing, not the order of writing. In Psalm 72, Solomon says to himself, who became king, Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness, describing himself as the king's son in third person for Jesus Christ. Solomon said, May his name endure forever, may it continue as long as the sun. Then all the nations will be blessed through him, and they will call him blessed, describing the kingdom of God that will be fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Characteristic of Volume 3 in Volume 3, we can see that we became the Son of God through God's covenant, but this time it leads to suffering through punishment. If Volume 1 is suffering as a king, Volume 3 is suffering as a king. Historically, after Solomon, the Israelites were taken captive and their kingship was cut off. This was clearly the punishment for God's covenant people, and it was the suffering that resulted from it. So in Volume 3, their destruction is regarded as abandonment and the question of why is constantly repeated. And again, they pray for recovery. Characteristic of Volume 4 Volume 3 consists of 17 Psalms and Volume 4 also have 17 Psalms. Volume 4 gives the reason for the suffering in Volume 3. God reaffirmed the covenant that he already gave us and told us that all these sufferings are not from God's incompetence but are given as God's love for the sins of God's people and that he will surely restore them. It is because God is still the subject and ruler of all things. So Volume 4 starts with Psalms 90, Moses' Psalm. Moses proclaimed God saying, From everlasting to everlasting. You are God. And then praise, relent Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. In Volume 4, several psalmists proclaim that only God is their strength and help, and they have hope in God. They praise the Lord and come before Him again with thanks. And in Psalms 105, it affirms the covenant made with Abraham, the oath made to Isaac, and the eternal covenant made to Jacob. Characteristic of Volume 5 now in Volume 5, Psalms proclaim what the life of the people restored by the covenant of God, the people who realize the reason for their suffering should be. First is to give thanks. Second is to praise. In particular, all Psalms from Psalms 146 to 150 begins and ends with Hallelujah, which means praise the Lord. Thanks and praise are the same things. True gratitude leads to praise and those who are grateful can give praise. Third is to pray. Fourth is to fear God. Fifth is relying only on God. Sixth is to hold on to the word of God. Psalm 119, which is presumed to be David's psalm, tells us that God's people must hold on to the word of the Lord like life as the word of God with expressions of commandments, statutes, decrees, evidences, ordinances, laws, percepts, and lessons. 
Seventh is to yearn for the temple. The Psalms is the last psalm recorded in captivity, when they have not yet seen a realistic recovery. But nevertheless, in volume 5, they are praising and giving thanks to God. Nothing has improved from the book of Job. But we have seen that complete recovery will come to the repentant Job. That is why the fifth volume of Psalms only glorifies God, sets our heart, and hopes for the salvation of God who knows everything. Now in volume 1, the life of Jesus Christ and the Christian life are revealed through the life of David. And volume 2 is about the covenant being fulfilled to the king's son. Volume 3 is about the sufferings of his son and people as a king. And in volume 4, we saw the reasons for suffering and God's covenant taking care of them again during those sufferings. And finally, in volume 5, we saw that thanking, praising, praying, fearing, and relying on God, who has never changed despite the situation and circumstances, is holding on to the word of God. Psalms and Jesus Christ the Psalms specifically reveal the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, who will come as the Messiah. Like the four Gospels, the Psalms offer different perspectives on the person and work of Christ, King, Servant, the Son of Man, and the Son of God. In particular, when we look at Jesus Christ revealed in the Psalms centering on Psalms 110 and 118, which are called the Messiah's Psalms, we can see as follows. Jesus Christ is the King established by God, and the Son of God. He came as a descendant of David, had zeal for the temple, and spoke in parables. And although Jesus Christ was an abandoned stone, he became the headstone, became the Lord, and served as a priest. He was betrayed by a friend, was hated without reason by false witnesses, had his clothes divided and casted by lords, prayed for his enemies, had his hands and feet nailed, and was shamed. When he was abandoned by God, he cried out, and when he was thirsty, he received wine with gall and vinegar, committed his spirit to God, and died. Jesus Christ's bones were not broken but was resurrected, and after he ascended, he sat at the right hand of God. We can need that very zeal of God. The story that will reveal Jesus Christ in God's kingdom that will finally be achieved through Jesus Christ, that story of God's zeal, continues.